Hey guys, winter is finally here. And not just any winter, it's the dreaded polar vortex. So it hasn't been the coldest weather we've ever had up here, but I mean, it's been low minus 20s with the wind chill minus 30. So if you wanted to test lithium batteries and see how they stand up in the cold, this is the week to do it. How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's a bit cliche, but it's actually scary how fast time flies. It's been almost three years since EarthX sent me these batteries to try out. So I've had lots of questions and comments since I posted that video, everything from charging them below zero to how well they work in extremely low temperatures. You know what, I gotta be honest with you guys, one of my EarthX batteries I have not maintained properly, and I'm kind of wondering if I might have damaged it. So we're gonna answer those questions today. So in terms of charging, absolutely, I have charged these batteries more than once below zero, and I haven't had a problem. So I can't speak for all lithium batteries, but for EarthX lithium iron phosphate, yeah, you can charge them. They'll charge a little bit slower, but you can. Now, in terms of those really cold temperatures, I mean, some of you guys were in Manitoba and Yellowknife and Alaska, and you were talking about minus 30 to minus 50. Keep in mind, I'm in Ontario, Canada, and I get some cold winters, but I don't get anything like minus 50. I'm not very often below minus 30. <sighs> minus 50, really? Yeah, I mean, if you regularly dip that cold because you live in the Yukon or on the moon, then I can see where you'd run into problems. So I've never had a single problem, but the stated operating temperature of those batteries is minus 30 to plus 60 Celsius. I don't think it'll hurt the battery. I just think that the battery doesn't function as well when you get down to those kinds of temperatures. As far as I know, what you may find is you have to try and start it more than once. Because each time you hit that starter, the battery's gonna warm up a little bit. But you know, in some of those really extreme temperatures that some of you guys have asked me about, you may have to physically warm the battery or put like a battery blanket on it. So Environment Canada is telling us we have some really cold weather, at least for a couple of days. So that's ideal because we've been waiting for cold weather, obviously just for snowmobiling, we want the ground to freeze, we want the snow to stay, but it's also convenient because I wanted to do some testing with these EarthX batteries. I have an ETZ14C in the ATV and I have an ETX36D for the sled. So the one I put in the ATV has been there ever since. So I've been plowing snow with this ATV for the last three years. So it's been running the winch. It's been out in the cold. Before I built the garage, it was stored out in the tent. And my garage is way better than the tent was, but it's still unheated and uninsulated. All right, completely different scenario, other end of the spectrum. This ETX36D, the battery for my sled, has not been in use in my sled the entire time. So I took it out of the sled for one reason. The connections or the posts for the battery are actually in the center. Now having center mounted terminals and then using these terminal adapters, which can go on either way, you've got almost unlimited mounting options. And that's pretty cool if you're trying to do a custom install. So I'll show you later when we install it in the sled, but I was a little worried about those center terminals shorting against my battery box. So the first season I insulated the terminals with some electrical tape and put a piece of foam there. I took it back out of the sled because I wanted to come up with something more permanent. I stuck it up on the shelf and unfortunately I never got back to it. So I'm kind of hoping I haven't damaged it. So there's two things that I want to do before I try and start the sled with that battery. First thing, I'm going to put a charge in it and that seems reasonable. It's been sitting on the shelf all that time. After that, I'm going to wrap it in this thin plastic bag just to keep the water out and I'm going to stick it in a snowbank overnight. That made more sense before I said it out loud but I'm gonna do it anyway. So it's well below zero. It has completed its charging cycle and switched to maintenance mode. Oh, it's cold out here. It's about 11.30. So we're around 10 o'clock. Unfortunately, it's warmed up more than I anticipated overnight. So this battery is chilled. It's been sitting in minus 30 all night, but it is up to about minus 20, which is still cold. Okay, first up, let's do a cold start on the ATV. First off, the winch. No problem. Let's see how it does. So we'll move this out here to make some more room and then I'll install the battery in the sled. So I just want to start off by checking the charge. So a fully charged EarthX lithium battery should be 13.28 to 14.6 volts. 
And after a good chill in the snow, 13.96. Now, according to their spec, that battery is fully charged, but I'm happy with that voltage, so let's stick it in the sled and see what it does. So the center terminals are the one thing I don't like about this battery for my sled. And that's because of this metal hold down in the battery box. Because I just worry that over time with all the vibration, that if I put a piece of foam in there or electrical tape, that it's going to wear through or fall out. So what I ended up doing, I just put some plastic underneath that and I attached it with the foam adhesive from a GoPro mount. I've had GoPro mounts on my helmets for years and they haven't come off. All right, guys, moment of truth. This sled has the EarthX battery in it. That EarthX battery has been sitting up on that shelf for at least a year, because as long as this garage has been here, and before that, it was sitting on another shelf. So, moment of truth, will it start my sled? Now, I was hoping to do my cold starts at minus 30. As usual, winter is not cooperating. Minus 20 is still pretty cold, and that was a pretty strong start, especially for a battery that's been sitting as long as that one has. But if you ask me, can you charge and use those EarthX batteries in the cold weather? The answer is yes. Yeah, so my one concern with the battery is those center terminals. It seems like an easy fix. I'm hoping that's something they address in a future design, either by dropping the terminal down a little bit lower in the battery or even shipping it with like an insulating cap. But it would not surprise me at all if they did. They're actually a pretty innovative company. They just brought out a new generation of these batteries. So the Gen 2s have a bunch of new features and they're claiming they have 20% longer shelf life. So check out the website. I'll put a link in the description for this video. So after three years, what do I think? And do I think the value is there to pay the additional cost for these batteries? Well, there's a couple of things I can tell you. I've replaced a lot of lead acid batteries over the years. Batteries that I have not had as long as these EarthX batteries. Now, a lot of times it's been my fault. Poor maintenance, right? Like this battery I took out of the lawnmower, stick it on the shelf, forget about it, and don't put a charge in it. Just like I did with that lithium battery. Difference is this one would freeze and then I'd be buying another one in the spring. So I can only speak to my experience over the last few years. If I look at the temperatures that I typically get, if I look at how that battery has performed in that ATV consistently every winter, if I look at how it started my sled, even after it was sitting all that time, and then I look at the difference in weight, if you've got the budget, there's definitely value there. So if you watched my last video, don't forget, the main reason to spend a little bit more on a lithium battery is if you really want to save weight. So the lead acid battery that was in my sled was about 15 pounds. This is four. I would say both machines start stronger, but that's difficult for me to quantify. So not the most detailed scientific testing. There's a lot of videos about lithium batteries, but that's my experience with the ones from EarthX. So this winter has been terrible for me. Um, I've had very little snow, very little cold weather. I've had the sleds out like twice so far. So yeah, we've had a couple of days now when we're down into the kind of minus 26 range. But then it's going to warm up tomorrow and we're going to have rain later this week. So Misery Loves Company, tell me in the comments below, what's your winter been like? Has it been as bad as mine? All right, guys, so not the minus 30 cold start that I was hoping for, but hopefully I answered some of your questions. If I did or if you found it interesting or entertaining, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up. If you haven't already, take a second, subscribe to the channel, click the little bell icon. You'll get notified when I post a new video. So that's it for this video. I will catch you on the next one. But I'm happy with that vo <sighs> The main reason to spe- <sighs> In the morning we'll bring it back in, we'll- Unlike a lead acid battery that's per- <sighs> And whether people are professional, and they're never dramatic. So if they say polar vortex, then we can expect exposed skin to drop off in seconds, birds to fall from the trees and shatter on the ground. <laughs>